Hi, welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations. Uh, today we are going to start the second order ODEs. <coughs> First, uh, a few words about the origin of the set of problems. Then we are going to look at some uh, very special uh, solution methods, uh, solution by substitution and solution by reduction. And then in the next section, we are going to look at more general setting. <coughs> Okay, why do we look at second order ODEs? First of all, what does second order mean? So if you have a function, it's derivative and it's a second derivative in your independent variable in the context of an equation that is second order equation, uh, typically written in this form. Now, why do we study this thing? Because uh, of many problems in engineering or in physics. Well, everybody knows about Newton's law. In Newton's law, you know, F is equal to MA. So A is acceleration. Acceleration is second derivative of position with respect to time. So if T is time, and Y is the position, then the velocity will be Y prime, and acceleration will be Y double prime. So in a standard uh, physics or engineering problem, you have a relationship between time, position, velocity, and acceleration. Pretty much all mechanics problems boil down to the relationship between these four items. You have various forces that either depend on acceleration, <coughs> excuse me, either they depend on the position, like the force of gravity, or they depend on velocity as in the drag force, and they all add up to the F in F equal to MA, and you, you have a relationship between these quantities. Okay, let's go ahead and look at uh, some special situations for uh, solving these equations before we open the topic to more general cases. Very special situation comes up if your equation is in this format. It's a linear equation, a and b are some given functions, and you have y prime and y double prime. And the special thing about this type of equation is that the y doesn't show up. Suppose y doesn't show up. How do we solve that problem? Well, we are going to present a very simple uh, approach to this, and uh, will be done very quickly. Next uh, set of special situations that we are going to look at is so-called so uh, solution by reduction. Solution re by reduction means suppose a one solution of uh, an equation is given, you are asked to find a second solution. All these second order differential equations have two solutions. <coughs> They have two solutions, and sometimes a knowledge of one of them leads uh, into easy discovery of the second solution. Just like in algebra, that if you have an expression and then you factor it, then that factorization leads you to finding the solution quickly. Here, uh, reduction is a sort of factorization. We are going to give a uh, general formula for that case. Let's go look at uh, three examples I've prepared for you. First of them is a solution by substitution. Let's go see how does this one work. Suppose I have uh, an equation that is given to me y double prime plus 2, excuse me, u double prime plus 2u prime is equal to 0. This is a second order equation because we have two derivatives here. How does substitution help here? Substitution we are going to use is say, let's call it W is equal to U prime. I take U prime and call it W. Well, that's going to force me to take U double prime and that's going to be W prime. So my equation becomes what now? Instead of U double prime, I write W prime. 
and instead of 2u prime I write 2w equal to 0 so what kind of an equation is that well, let's now first order equation okay so it's a first order equation uh, essentially you see a reduction this was a second order no this is first order so it, it is an example of reduction but the way we are going to solve this thing is by uh, appealing to what we have learned about the first order equation but how did we solve this you have several choices you can go after integrating factor or you can uh, separate it either way you can handle this so let's uh, write this I said dw dt plus 2w equal to 0 I can write this thing as dw uh, dt is equal to minus 2w and then dw uh, over w is equal to minus 2dt Okay, so what we did here was uh, try separation. Now I integrate both sides. So this is logarithm of w, and this is minus 2t plus a constant. Let's call it c. Exponentiate both sides. So I'll have exponential of logarithm of absolute value of w is equal to exponential of minus 2t plus c. Remember, we can write this thing as exponential of minus 2t times exponential of c. Exponential of logarithm of w is just w. So w is going to be plus or minus. I write exponential of c first and exponential of minus 2t. Now, if c is a constant, exponential of it is some other constant. This one will be positive. But since I have plus or minus, this whole thing will be a constant. Could be positive, could be negative. This whole thing, to reduce the clutter, I can call it any constant w, call it constant k, exponential of minus 2t. So what did we, I, we achieve here? We achieved that the solution of w prime uh, plus 2w equal to 0 is some multiple of exponential of minus 2t. Now, let me just remind you that we could have uh, bypassed quite a bit of this by appealing to what we remember from uh, calculus. If you wrote it w prime is equal to minus 2w, you're asking, and this is the same as that, what function is, is it whose derivative is minus twice itself? We have come across this thing quite a few times. Uh, w will be some constant times exponential of minus 2t. Uh, in general, if you come across w prime is equal to aw, solution of it, you can quickly go ahead and write this so that uh, you save time. Exponential of at. <coughs> okay. Is that your done? Well, no. w was, for sake of our convenience, we called the u prime. And we called it W. So we had, did a substitution here. I still have to figure out U, because U was the original question here. What is U? So now we say, I have found the W. That's same as U prime. So I know that U prime is equal to, uh, in this problem, K exponential of minus 2T. Well, now solving this thing is uh, straightforward because it's an example from calculus. I have a derivative of some function. What's that function itself? Well, take the antiderivative. So I'll take the antiderivative of exponential of minus 2t dt. You get constant times exponential of minus 2t over minus 2 plus some other constant. Let's call this thing a. So now I have u is equal to k over minus 2 exponential of minus 2t uh, plus constant a. 
if you want to make your final equation uh, to look even nicer I have this quantity I call it A stands to reason for sake of aesthetics and uh, having a clean looking answer K was some constant itself came out of uh, some activity here now you are multiplying it or dividing it by minus 2 you might as well call it B so I have uh, some constant exponential of minus 2t plus some other constant this becomes my final solution here <coughs> okay uh, this is a kind of a situation we are going to come across uh, quite often so if you come across a y double prime plus b y prime equal to zero you can uh, do a substitution of u prime or y prime is equal to w then attempt to solve that by uh, separation and then uh, you can get uh, your solution now let's go to the example of reduction example of reduction is a situation where we are given a differential equation second order and we are given one solution of it and we want to find the second one for example let's pick uh, example 2 here I have y double prime minus so examples of <coughs> method of reduction I had y double prime minus uh, y equal to 0 and solution number 1 of this thing is given to me as e to the x the question is find the other one all second order equations <coughs> ones that we come across have two solutions and the question is if I know one of them would I have an easy time of finding the second one well a method that works in all these cases is a uh, method we saw uh, in the case of first order equation something similar to this we start with the following we say y2 I consider it to be a multiple of the first solution you have given me some function I still don't know what it is times exponential of x so I it's always safe to make uh, such an assumption assume the function that you want to find y2 is a multiple of some other unknown function with the first solution that is provided okay this y2 is supposed to be a solution of this thing so if I take this thing and plug it back here I have to get zero I use that as a clue to figure out what u is going to be so I say u exponential of x whatever that is second derivative of it minus u exponential of x has to be zero now I go ahead and find the second derivative let's go ahead and do that carefully on the side u exponential of x first of all I have to figure out the first derivative so that I do second derivative after first derivative I have to be careful about this product rule I'll have u prime exponential of x plus u no, derivative of exponential of x we end up being uh, a little bit uh, <coughs> easy on ourselves the derivative of exponential of x is just exponential of x now if I want to take next derivative out of this means I have to take derivative of all of that so u prime exponential of x plus u exponential of x the whole thing prime again I go after this prime over the first entity I have to apply the product rule here and also here so applying it here u prime another prime becomes u double prime exponential of x times u prime so it's going to be u prime exponential of x so, oh, uh, sorry uh, let me make a, a mistake here let me just start again 
So derivative of this times the exponential of x is going to be u double prime exponential of x plus derivative of the second one times the first. So it's going to be u prime exponential of x. So this, all of that is the derivative of this expression. Now let's go uh, after this component. Derivative of the first one, u prime exponential of x. This first one, derivative of the second. What happens always is that you get these two matching each other up and they double up u double prime exponential of x plus 2u prime exponential of x plus u exponential of x. Well, our equation, let's go back to our original equation. Original was this. I made that substitution. It became this one. Now, for this second derivative, I did my side work here. I take all of this and substitute it for this one. So I'll have u double prime e to the x plus 2u prime e to the x plus u exponential of x. This is this expression here. And then this one, I have to subtract minus u exponential of x, the whole thing equal to 0. You notice that these two cancel each other out, and we will get what? Let's write it. I'll get u double prime exponential of x plus 2u prime exponential of x. These two terms cancel each other out, equal to 0. Now we stare at this for a second. We see that exponential of x is common, so I can factor it. No, one factor is the exponential of x, second factor is this expression, u double prime plus 2u prime. Well, this exponential is never zero, so the only way this equation can add up to being zero is the second parenthesis is zero. Now, do you remember this? Well, that is what we started with. If I had u double prime plus u 2u prime equal to 0, I have the solution of it. Uh, here, for some reason, I use the letter t. But if instead of t, I've used x, well, my answer will be in terms of x, and whatever uh, happens to be, I can use that uh, same uh, formula. So I can say u is some number. Uh, you're copying this. U is some number plus some other number exponential of minus 2x. And that one was t, here's the x. <coughs> now, what was uh, our original substitution? We said assume u2 is u times exponential of x. So uh, y. is exponential of x times a plus b exponential of minus 2x. I multiply through, I get a exponential of x. Exponential of x times exponential of minus 2x, you add up to two exponents, you get b exponential of minus x. So let's see what happened. We had We had this equation, and we were given one solution of it. We found the second solution. So, so uh, the idea was that we had y double prime minus y equal to 0. We were given y1 was exponential of x. We found a general solution that has what we had to begin with at the beginning. We had exponential of x is the solution. What we have discovered is this one as a new 
function that also solves that equation. So this is our new discovery. We always get a combination of whatever we had started with plus a new function. Both of them, each of them is multiplied by com some constant. That's a general feature of second order equation. So if you wish, you can call all of this thing y2, or if you wish, you want to emphasize what, what portion of this thing is new, what portion is new is this one. So if you wish to write it neatly and cleanly, say my y2 is exponential of minus x. So what happened here is that we use the method of <coughs> uh, uh, reduction. Given one solution, we found the found the other one. Okay, now let me go ahead and explain uh, something in general. If we have if we have this uh, differential equation, and we are given a solution y one then y2 can be quickly cooked up out of this formula and uh, if you want to bypass steps and in some ways just put it in a black box and produce your second solution here is the shortcut for a lot of activity okay now let's go ahead and do this thing in general so we have, sorry, we have a second order differential equation. We are given one solution. We want to find the second one. Here's a general formula. We want to show that uh, y2 is equal to y1 times an integral of a function that is a numerator and denominator. Denominator is just y1 squared. Numerator is exponential of negative of integral of p. Exponential of negative of integral of p. <coughs> uh, so this uh, solution step is going to be a little bit more involved than what we have seen before, but uh, very doable in within our range. So let's go practice it. So again, we have <coughs> Uh, the following differential equation y double prime plus p uh, y prime plus q y p and q some given function equal to zero <coughs> one solution is given one solution let's call it y one is given the question is show that the second solution y2 can be written as the function y1 times the integral of draw a bigger integral uh, integral of exponential of negative of integral of p this means we don't write all the pieces px dx <coughs> over uh, y1, the function y1 squared. This function, this is a function, you divide it and take the integral all over again. Show that this is our second solution. So the approach that we are going to take is going to be very similar to what we just did. We are going to assume that y is y1 times some function as yet to be found. So a general solution is y1 times a unknown function u. Next, well, if that's the case, then this, when plugged into that, has to give us 0. So y1 u double prime plus p y1 u prime plus q y1 u has to be 0. Well. Let's practice the pieces. Y1 u prime, this thing. We have to apply the <coughs> product rule. Uh, this is going to be y1 prime u plus y1 u prime. Then how about the second derivative? We have y1 u double prime. Well, 
that would be the derivative of this. So I have to take y1u plus y1u prime prime. So it becomes again y1 prime u plus y1u prime. Uh, this is I have a let me uh, double check. This is supposed to be a copy of that, so I needed a prime here. So when I take a second derivative, this is going to be second derivative y1 double prime u plus y1 prime u prime plus y1 prime u prime plus y1 u double prime. Is that right? Double check that I did it right. <coughs> so I'm going to take this and replace it for that. So I have y1 double prime u. Uh, these two, you notice, are the same, so we might as well, as usual, double up on that. Uh, sorry, let me write this nicer. So I'll have 2y1 prime uh, u prime plus y1 u uh, double prime. plus p, p times uh, this expression, so that's going to be <coughs> y1 prime u plus y1 u prime plus q y1 u equal to 0. Now, let's go ahead, take the terms that have u's in them factor it out. So I have factor of u, y1 double prime plus p y1 prime plus q y1. Okay. Factor the u out of these three, put them aside. I have <coughs> 2 y1 prime u prime plus y1 u double prime plus p y1 u prime all of that equal to zero. Why did I separate u here? Well, we said y1 is a solution. So given that y1 is a solution, if it is a solution of our equation, that means this is zero. That's the magic of it. Now let me take this equation and write it in order. y1 double prime plus 2y1 prime plus py1, all of it times u prime is equal to 0. Now you notice <coughs> this is like the first problem that we solved, like this problem that we did it here. We are going to apply exact same technique to it and separate it and solve it just like that. So I am going to write, uh, <coughs> sorry, screen is sensitive. Uh, I'm going to take this thing, uh, separate it. Uh, let's first take w to be u prime. So our equation uh, u double prime is going to be w prime. So this is y1 w prime. 2y1 prime plus py1 times, well, u prime, we called it w. We notice this is separable. You want to solve for w. How do I solve it? Let's rearrange it. I write y1 w prime is equal to minus uh, 2y1 prime plus py1 times w. I divide by w here, so w prime over w is equal to minus 2y1 prime over y1 and py1 divided by y1 is just going to be minus p. 
<coughs> now we are going to integrate so I'm going to write integral of w prime over w dx is equal to minus integral of 2y1 prime over y1 dx minus integral of p dx well first one what is that that's of course logarithm of w how about this one this minus 2 logarithm of y1 and uh, well this is integral of p and then we have some constant let's call it c now exponentiate both sides so I'll have w exponentiating this one it would be y1 to power of minus 2 uh, exponentiating this one is going to be exponential of minus integral of p dx and exponential of c is going to be some constant let me just write exponential of c <coughs> now I write uh, w remove the absolute value it's going to be plus or minus exponential of c this one y1 to the power of minus 2 I might write it y1 squared and that's the exponential of minus p dx to clean things up this exponential of c is a constant plus or minus so that is some constant of any sign so w is going to be that expression what was w itself w was u prime so what we have is u prime is equal to combine all of this thing in some constant let's call it k exponential of minus integral of p dx over y1 squared well we were looking for u primes or we were looking for u and we can find the u easily here is k integral of exponential of integral of p dx over y1 squared plus some constant so let's call it m now what was the role of u the role of u was the second solution was y1 times u so what we have now the second solution y was y1 times u now what that means is that I have to multiply all of this thing by y1 so it's going to be k y1 integral of exponential of minus integral of p dx over y1 squared plus m times y1 so we are looking for the second solution we always get a copy of the first solution this was the first solution now you can combine it with the rest of your solution it's all okay or you can just to keep it short and simple you can call this one your second solution So to keep it short, we call that the second solution. So we got y2 is y1 times the integral of exponential of minus integral of p dx over y1 squared. We are taking an integral all over it. Okay, that was admittedly a little bit twisted, and we had to go through uh, multiple layers to get this. Let's go ahead and do a problem. Uh, where we use this formula so in homeworks and such it's your option to just go ahead directly use this thing uh, and uh, uh, make the problem uh, to be done quickly so here we had one problem let's see uh, what is it problem three so we have x squared y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 4y is equal to 0 and we are given that y1 is equal to x squared okay we are given y1 is equal to x squared we want to find y2 let's go apply our shortcut that we just developed instead of <coughs> reinventing the wheel all over again so here was our problem 
solve x2 y double prime minus 3x y prime plus 4y is equal to 0. Given that, somehow we know one solution, y1 is equal to x squared, is easy for you to verify. Take this thing, 2 derivative out of that becomes 2 times, becomes 2x squared. This becomes minus 6x squared, and this becomes 4x squared. So 4 and 2 minus uh, 6, uh, we get 0. <coughs> So it's easy to verify this is actually a solution. We want to find, in particular, we want to find y2. So we just gave a, a very quick recipe. y2 is y1 times integral of exponential of minus integral of p over y1 squared. Now who is p? important thing is to write this in, in standard notation. In standard means divide by the leading coefficient, so the leading coefficient is 1. So we say divide by x squared. So our equation becomes y double prime minus, and you divide this thing by x squared becomes minus 3 over x y prime. This becomes 4 over x squared y equal to 0. Now who is who? This is going to be our p. p minus 3 over x. <coughs> q doesn't show up in our formula somehow. Uh, so y1, y1 is given x squared. Big integral, exponential of minus integral of p minus 3 over x dx over y1 squared, y1 squared, y itself is x squared, y1 squared, I have to square again, <coughs> and then take an integral of that. So the second solution is x squared times, take integral, exponential of minus minus plus becomes 3 over x, that is, 3 logarithm of x over, this is x to power of 4, the whole thing dx. So that is x squared integral of what's the exponential of 3 logarithm of x. We have seen this problem quite often. Exponential of, uh, this is exponential of logarithm of x cubed. So that's x cubed. So let's uh, just <coughs> write a little identity. We keep using this thing exponential of a logarithm of x is x to the power of a. So in short, this is x cubed. This is x to the power of 4 dx. No need to bother with the constant there. It just uh, clutter, clutters. So x squared integral of dx over x. So it becomes x squared logarithm of x. If you put a constant, that constant multiplies x squared, which is a copy of your first solution anyway. So if you say x squared logarithm of x plus a constant, that's fine. x squared logarithm of x is a piece, and c uh, <coughs> x squared is another piece. So uh, of course, here, uh, We could have a constant here, which is going to create a multiple for this one. And so it's going to be a logarithm of x. And this one will also multiply by a constant. But we didn't bother. So our solution, second solution, is x squared logarithm of x. Our first given solution was x squared. Second one, a little bit less obvious than the first is x squared logarithm of x. So again, uh, <coughs> it was uh, uh, a bit lengthy to derive the formula itself. Here is our formula. But applying it is straightforward, and we could get the solution. <coughs> so to review, 
we started the second order differential equation. We said they are coming from physics or engineering problems. Uh, we solved it by substitution and converting to a separable differential equation. And then we had the more significant case of uh, reduction uh, problems where we had the shortcut as explained here. Okay, until next time, good luck and God bless.